I gave myself 24 hours to 100% Lego Batman the video game. Now, just like many of you probably have done watching this video, I've played this game before in my youth, aka back in 2007 when it first came out, but I've never actually 100% of this game before. Hell, I've never even beaten the villain mission to completion before. So that's why in this video, we're going to be doing exactly that, but as a challenge, I'm going to be giving myself 24 hours. Can I do it? You'll have to see. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now let's get straight into the video, as with this game, it's going to be a little more difficult than last time when I did this with Super Mario 3D World, as in my last video, I was able to collect everything in the game in one shot without having to replay through it over again to actually get the green stars. But in this game, in order to actually 100% it, you need to get all the collectibles such as the mini kits and the red bricks, save all the hostages, getting the super status in every level which I'll explain later, and purchasing all the data, upgrades, and characters on the bad computer. Now, here's the game plan going into it. For those of you who haven't played this game before, the game contains two different kinds of missions. One being the hero missions where you play as Batman and Robin and another set of missions that are the villain missions where you get to play through all the events leading up to Batman's arrival in that particular level but you get to play as a variety of different villains such as the Riddler, Penguin and the Joker and in order to quote unquote beat the main game you have to play through all 30 of those missions to complete it. Now the game plan that I came up with is that since the only thing in this game that doesn't require you to replay the level and you can get consistently pretty easily are the super villain and superhero statuses also known as the stud counters as in these games if you get a certain number of studs in each level you can the superhero or supervillain achievement depending on the version of the levels you're playing. And that's the first thing I did as I started the timer, got in the game, and went through both stories all the way through to get the superhero and supervillain statuses in each level except for one, but I'll get to that later. All while collecting some of the mini kits and red bricks on the side when I could. And when I finally beat both versions of the missions, the time came up to about 8 hours, 51 minutes, and 35 seconds. Now, I hear you yelling at your screen. Why is the timer saying you beat the game in 3 hours? Well, about that. If you guys watched my last video, I accidentally reset the timer multiple times when using my keyboard during breaks. So I turned off global hotkeys on live split and rebind the timer keys to buttons that I never use. And for whatever reason, when I came back the next day to play this game, my brain just couldn't resist pressing the new button that I set for myself for resetting the time. So when I came back to start up the time again, I reset the timer by accident. And you could say, well, why didn't you just restart the game like we did in Mario 3D World? Well, because I knew this game would take way longer to get through than that game, and I have to replay this game multiple times over anyway, so even though I was mad at myself, I still had to press on, and press on did I do, bringing us to free play, and unlike the main game, I'm actually gonna go over these, cause this is where it actually gets interesting, as we finally get to collect things for once, and we can use all the different characters all at once in the different levels, since free play allows you to do that. Starting with the first level in the Riddler's Revenge called You Can Bank on Batman, where we managed to already find three of the mini kits the first time around, with the other seven being unattainable without free play, as we managed to collect the fourth pretty easily, with Batman's Sonic suit and the fifth by using a poison character, in this case Poison Ivy, to walk across the poison and remove the truck out of the way in order to interact with the man in the window as Scarecrow to get to the fifth mini kit. The sixth and seventh we both get with the use of Batman's bombs as one is hidden in the sewer and the other we get by using a strong character, in this case Clayface, to move this object to reveal a grapple point which leads to a tightrope that leads to the mini kit that you get by blowing up the window. The eighth and ninth are pretty easy as well as you just move this object to walk up this window and get the mini kit and the ninth you use Robin's sucking powers to suck up all the garbage and get the mini kit for free right here. But the 10th isn't the hardest but takes a little bit of searching as you need to park two cars in these spots and use the lever after you park each one in order for the final door to open to get the mini kit. I know it sounds super simple explaining it but trust me I could not understand it in the moment. And after that you fight Clayface as normal and get the red brick from attacking this wall and we're done with the first level in the game in about 20 minutes. Which brings us to Mr. Freeze's mission an icy reception where we find the first mini kit in the opening of this wall after moving the truck and then saving the hostage after interacting with the boogeyman in the window as well as finding the next mini kit along this wall as well. But after that we riz up another man in a window which sounds super weird now that I say it and get the fifth mini kit in this level. The red brick is achievable by flying over to this platform moving this object out of the way with a strong character and breaking this object which reveals a turn wheel that the AI character generously stands on for us so that we can get to the brick in no time. And after that we get the seventh brick by blowing up this thing and the eighth as well by blowing up a door and using the fan to get to it. The ninth on the other hand is really cool as we use Scarecrow to mind control the person inside this box who's in the box for whatever reason to use the lever to open the door to get the mini kit. Now I know you're wondering, well it's the end of the level, where's the 10th mini kit? Well this one was really well hidden and it was honestly in a place where I really didn't bother to look the first time around as I went back through the entire level and couldn't find it anywhere. But that's when I remember at the beginning of this level when I got the second mini kit. There was a destructible window that I missed and when I got there I was right and when I destroyed the window, boom it popped out and it was 
was right there. And I gotta say, this was really hard to find. So if this mini kit was that well hidden, just imagine what's coming up in the future. But after that, we get back on track. We move back to the ending, beat Mr. Freeze, and finish off the second level in the game. The third level wasn't that bad as you literally just shoot everything in order to get the mini kits and the red brick. But the only mini kits that you can't get by shooting things are two, and that's in the middle island of the second section of the level. We need to use Jokers and Harley's vehicles to drive over these platforms in order to actually get the mini kits, which is one of the more unique ways that you get the mini kits in these types of levels. The fourth level is Ivy's level, and this one was one of the longer ones as it took around 30 minutes to complete, as it's just a lot of destruction and a lot of sucking and disposing. But I will say that the red brick and one of the mini kits that you get are done in pretty cool ways, as one has Robin controlling a sprinkler as you water some flowers that spawn in the mini kit, and the red brick you get by pulling two levers and using Joker's electric hand. Yes, I know it's not as hype as I said it was, but it's as interesting as it's gonna get in this level, so come me some slack. But now we get to the final level in the first story, as this one took about 40 minutes to complete, yeah, really. And the reason for this is valid, because I literally couldn't find the last mini kit. Like, I literally searched through the entire level, and I didn't know where it was. And when I finally figured this out, I just lost my mind, as you literally had to stand on these pylons for it to spawn. Like, who's ever gonna think about doing that? It's so obscure, but after that, I did have to reset the level to do this, because in my original attempt, I ended up getting to the boss fight and couldn't leave, so yeah. But with that comes the end of the first story in the game, which took around 2 hours to complete, and that doesn't sound as bad as you think, but when you realize the timer is at around 11 hours at this point, since I did reset the timer at the beginning, it isn't all that gladly anymore. But nevertheless, we press on and move on to the second story called Power Craze Penguin. As we start off the first level, which is Catwoman, and this level was really bad, as it took me around 50 minutes to complete, and I really have no words at this point. As many times throughout this level, the game crashed, and it only crashed when I was all tapping out of the game to do something else for a second, which meant that every time it crashed, I had to reset the level all over again and collect everything I had already collected in this level. This level only crashed once though, but it was the worst timing possible because I was already 20 minutes into collecting things in this level and it crashed, so that sucked. But in general, this level as a whole wasn't that bad with the collectibles as it was just a lot of searching and figuring stuff out. But I will say one thing that absolutely pissed me off about this level was the mini kit under the water, as you had to use Robin's diving suit in specific to get it, as Croc apparently can't get it for whatever reason, even though he can walk underwater. But after this, we get the red brick using Batman's Sonic suit, beat up Catwoman for a little bit, and that's the first Penguin level over and done with, which brings us to the second level, which is another vehicle level, which we all know aren't the hardest things in the world, as all you do is shoot things to get the mini kits and the red bricks. But I will say that the only two things that were remotely difficult to find and do were the last two mini kits, as this one was hard in a sense of being able to destroy the object in the poison without touching the poison, and this one at the end that I completely missed on my first run through and had to find by rerunning the entire level again. But other than those two little roadblocks in my way, it wasn't that big a deal. The third level is Killer Croc's level, and this level was one of the easier ones out of the bunch, as all the collectibles were left out in pretty obvious places so that they weren't hard to get. But I will say that the sixth mini kit for me was, for whatever reason, so hard for me, as I just couldn't make this jump for whatever reason, I just kept forgetting there was a freaking hole right there, so whenever I got up to make the jump, I just fell right through. I don't know if I'm slow or I'm stupid, but let me know in the comments if you guys had trouble with this jump as well. But after that, we get to face off a Killer Croc in a pretty hilarious fashion, as if you play this fight as a strong character and start throwing the objects that he usually throws in the fight, he'll just start spotting in the objects from the throw to meet his quota, and oh yeah, if you start battering him in the poison, he just starts crashing out and jumps everywhere. I just found this really hilarious and just had to include this in the video. And after that, we get to Man Bat's level called Zoo's Company, and just like the last level, the mini kits and the red brick weren't that hard to get as they're all laid out pretty obviously. And no, not every level in the future will be like this, these are just small examples of easy levels. But just like the first level in the story, the game did end up crashing after again all tapping to check if the recording was still intact, and yes, this happens many more times throughout the challenge, so I had to restart from the very beginning after making it almost all the way through to the end of the level, which chewed into more of my time, which again was getting very dire at this point, as I only had about 11 hours left in the challenge, which meant that I had to speed things up. So after we collect the last couple of mini kits, we get to the boss fight, fight Man Bat, and get finished with the fourth level, easy as pie, bringing us to the fifth and final level in the story, the Penguins level, and this is the one level in the entire game where we didn't manage to get the superhero status off the rip, as it really wasn't enough chances in my opinion to get it, as I played the level twice over to try to get it, and gave up and decided to do it when I came back into free play. But would you believe it if I told you that even in free play, I almost didn't get it too. Yes, that did happen, as I only got it after destroying literally everything you could destroy in this level, and got worried when I was at the last part of the boss fight, and I still didn't have it. But eventually, I did end up getting it after destroying the last treadmilling penguin. But other than that, the mini kits were pretty easy to get in this level, but what did give me a scare with the last three because since the level in itself is really short, I was scared going into the boss fight that I had missed them. But luckily,
Luckily enough for me, all three were in the boss area and were really easy pickups, as well as the red brick, which did take a little bit of thinking. But when I did figure it out, I was just amazed with the creativity this game had to offer. Now, after that, we cheat through the ending of the boss fight by using our own penguins to destroy the other penguins rather than using the real penguins' penguins to destroy those penguins. And yes, I'm aware I just used the word penguin five times in the same sentence to beat the boss fight, bringing us to the end of the power craze penguin storyline, which took us around two hours to complete as well. And with that done, we move on to the third and final story in the hero mission room called the joker's return and this first level took about an hour to complete now here you're asking how the hell did it take you an hour to beat this level well first of all i did not know that jervis was able to interact with the man in the window as i only thought scarecrow and riddler could but i totally forgot that the guy who literally mind controls people could interact with these guys so i ended up restarting the level after realizing this about 10 minutes into the level and then as always i alt tab to check if my recording was fine since these files are all hours long this one is specifically five in total the game ended up crashing after about 20 minutes into me playing it again so i had to go back into the level replayed for the third time until i finally got back to where i was and got the sixth mini kit for the third time i then found the seventh mini kit after taking a quick dip in the poison and the eighth after fighting for my life trying to turn off all the poison gas as fast as possible to let the vehicles through which for whatever reason took damage from the poison which makes zero sense at all since i'm using poison ivy to drive it but i digress we then find the red brick after learning how to mix colors and the ninth and tenth hiding out in some pretty obvious hiding spots as well as the hostage as well as these henchmen didn't realize that they were literally right next to a tank of poison and that they could just throw the person in but again that's besides the point and after that we fought off jervis's mind control abilities again somehow i just forgot that he did that and finished off the first level of the third story i really don't know how it took this long which brings us to the second level which is harley quinn's level and this one didn't take as long as i thought it was gonna take as it only took around 20 minutes to complete which for me that's pretty good but overall this level wasn't terribly difficult as four of the mini kits including the red brick were at the beginning of the level and the rest being pretty easily findable with enough looking around but i will say that this level did include one of my favorite mini kit sections in this entire game as in order to get one of the mini kits we got to play bumper cars against some of the other henchmen which i thought was really cool and honestly i think this level as a whole was just so creative in the way that you were able to collect the mini kit and the red brick as you really use a claw machine to get the red brick and you play a bunch of other mini games to get the rest of the mini kits this level in general is just my favorite on free play as they really use the carnival atmosphere they created to the absolute limit instead of just hiding most of them like in every other level but with that we collect everything beat up Harley for the 50th time and move on to the third level flight of the bat and from the title we already know it's a plane slash vehicle level and from here we can see that we've already found six out of the 10 mini kits in level as just like the other vehicle levels in this game you just shoot and pray and things come to you because guess what it's a damn vehicle level but moving swiftly onwards we get to the fourth level in this episode which belongs to killer moth and this is a pretty long level as some of the mini kits in this level were either pretty hard to find or pretty hard to get to with most of them being at the beginning half of the level but also because the level is literally just a long level in general but i'll call up three mini kits that were the hardest to get in this level which consisted of the helicopter the cakes and this jump now on the first section of the level there are these hidden cakes that you have to find when traversing the opening and just like in some of the other levels for example with the carrots you have to destroy certain objects to get them to spawn in well that may be true for one of them but for the other two you actually had to find the correct object to destroy to actually build the cake before you could actually destroy it which honestly wasn't that hard i'm sounding super dramatic for absolutely no reason but i did miss the last one so that's something but just because i said that let's skip the jump because i was just gonna make up some story about me missing the jump like 10 times before i made it but i literally failed it once and got it on the second go it was a questionable landing i will say but i did still get it on the second try the helicopter is the one i will not skip though as during this section you use robin to suck up all the garbage i'm still not sure why but he does it and the machine builds a mini copter that robin can control from the panel and as you can see here i solved the puzzle right away but i still remember when i was a kid trying this level out i could never understand what to do on it and when i finally figured this out it was like i won the lottery it was amazing like who would even think about lighting up these spotlights with the helicopter it's honestly one of the hardest finds in the game for me in my opinion but thank god i remembered that or else i actually would have been stuck here for ages but other than that the red brick is easily findable in the next section as well as the ninth but the tenth was actually pretty hard to get as you had to know it was literally just behind this glass and you use the joker's buzzer to get it not hard at all which brings us to the final level in the hero's mission room which is the joker's level and honestly for the final level in the game it wasn't what i expected as since it's the final level in the story i expected the collectibles to be really hard to find or to have some really difficult puzzles to get to it but overall everything was pretty blatantly obvious of what you had to do to get to them or when to go to get them other than two of them like this one on the ledge and the organ which isn't even an organ by the way but apart from those two collectibles in this level they were all pretty easy to find and all we had to do now was collect the final two in the final area beat up the joker and that my friends brings us to the end of the hero free play missions and our time now tallies up to 15 hours 40 minutes and 
and 21 seconds. And by my calculations, we now only have about 8 hours, 19 minutes, and 39 seconds to complete the rest of the game. So what are we doing here to having a casual conversation for? Let's get to the rest of the game. But before we do that, let's actually have a conversation. I see you haven't subscribed to the channel. Yes, I know it. You want to know how? Because what most people do, they come to the channel, watch the video, and if I'm lucky, they leave a like and continue with the rest of the day. But please, out of pure kindness out of your own heart, take this moment and subscribe to the channel. It's completely free. And a lot of work is put into these types of videos. Like we're already 20 minutes into it and we're still not done. So if you would, please subscribe to the channel and share with a friend. I would really appreciate it. But what are we still doing here? Like, Time's a ticking, people. I appreciate the subscription and all, but we gotta go. Come on. Which brings us to the first story in the villain mission room called the Riddler's Revenge. The Lily call the same things as the hero room. But we get into the first level anyways, and just like the first level in the hero's mission room, all the mini kits are pretty much in your face. Other than this one, we need to crash into this thing over here. But the red brick actually is kind of hard to get as you need to actually think about this one as you pull down this ledge to build yourself a little car and you can actually park it in this elevator shaft thing where it crushes the car and spawns in the red brick. It took me a couple of minutes to figure out what to do in this section after driving around a little bit but it was one of those puzzles that ended up being really cool to figure out instead of just being outright given to you by the game just for breaking stuff for fun but after that we get to the last mini kit blow up the phone on the bank and finish the first level in the villain's mission room which takes us straight to the second level which of course is mr freeze's level and this one was honestly easier than the first as realistically the only hard mini kit in this level is the one where you have to drive the truck into the garage to spawn the mini kit it only took one percent of my brain power to figure this out but everything else is a breeze the third level is poison ivies and even though this level did take around 30 minutes to get through the mini kits and the red brick weren't that hard to find but the red brick in particular i did almost miss as there was a silver door right here that i missed on my first run through on this room that i had to go back and get but other than that it was pretty calm overall but the one thing i did really enjoy about this level was the first mini kit at the start of the level where you get to drive a car around the track which i think was a really creative way to get one of the kit just like the bumper cars from the harley level in the hero version but after we get done with that we reach the fourth level and both the fourth and fifth levels are both Harvey and Riddler's missions and both are pretty hard in their own regard but the red brick in this level in specific is probably the hardest red brick to get in this entire game since it's essentially a memory game where you have to light up the colors on the floor in the order they appear in at the start and this did take a few tries for me to get and I did obviously get it in the end but out of all the red bricks and the collectibles in general in this game this is definitely the hardest puzzle by far no question other than that one section all the mini kits are pretty easy to get and get fast as they're all clumped up pretty close together as this level isn't particularly long anyways so it was much easier to get through this level faster since all the mini kits were pretty close together but now we get to the fifth and final level in the first story as this level as a whole was probably the hardest to get through in this entire story as this one did take a lot of searching and trying things out as in the first section you can get a mini kit by taking control of a helicopter and shooting all the cameras outside for it to spawn i literally would not have figured this out if it wasn't just going around really spraying everything but that did take a little bit to figure out for me but another one that did take a while for me was the one behind the painting as you're supposed to use your batarangs on the wood under the painting but for whatever reason i didn't think about doing that so i just went around hitting things and those pieces of wood as well but then i decided to pull up the batarang and try it and it actually worked and i finally got the mini kit but i think other than those two everything else was able to be collected with relative ease other than maybe the golden paste which you had to find as you went through the room but those are pretty easy to find anyways but after finding all the mini kits we get stuck on what to do in the end because i have terrible memory and forgot what to do and we finished up the last level in the riddler villain story and move swiftly onwards to the penguins villain story and you think the first level would be cat mission based on the hero's mission but nope we get a bane mission as the developers probably added this character into the game so last minute to the point where they couldn't fit him into the main hero story so why not pawn him off into a villain story and give him a ds boss fight for god's sake so we get into the first level and off rip we have a problem we're supposed to get a mini kit by parking two vehicles over these huge buttons but the problem is that one of the vehicles we're supposed to fix glitched out and didn't allow us to drive it which meant of course i had to reset the level from the very beginning but luckily for us there's a save and exit button so we don't actually have to recollect everything but after a quick Quick reset we get the truck up and working again and get the mini kit that caused a full-on reset after that we raise up another man in the window again it sounds super weird every time i say it and get the red brick somehow on the first try without pushing the lever whatsoever so w but after that we get a crazy joker and robin link up where we use joker's buzzer to spawn in these boats and use robin to control them through his control panel and drive them through these barrels i guess to get the mini kit and straight after that we raise another man i don't know what's up with these guys and wanting to openly allow poison ivy to poison them but hey whatever floats your boat buddy so anyways after getting into 
into this room with Ivy's influence, we use Robin to suck up all the garbage in order to build a jukebox, which we instantly destroy to get the ninth mini kit. And the tenth isn't all that bad either, as it's just hiding under this lily pad. And after realizing I could just save and exit the mission after having to reset the first time, I do just that after collecting the last mini kit and we're off to the second mission, which is undoubtedly Catwoman's as we're set on the very rooftop the hero mission takes place on. The collectibles in this level weren't very hard to miss, as just like in a lot of the other levels in this game, they're set up pretty easily for you to find, other than maybe the neon sign one where you need to destroy all three for it to spawn, but that one is also really easy to do, it's just I'm an idiot and I missed the first one even though in my original playthrough of the missions I hit the first one off rip, but didn't realize I could shoot the other two. But other than that little mishap, the level overall wasn't that hard, and everything was just smooth sailing so nothing really much else to speak about there. The third level however is the same exact thing as it's just a vehicle and you can just literally get everything by shooting stuff. The fourth level however wasn't the hardest but there were a few ways that we got the collectibles in this level that I found pretty cool as for one of the mini kits we put a music set together until the Jones brothers had a reunion and spawned in this mini kit in front of us. And another where we get the red brick from this puzzle which isn't the most complicated actually what am I saying it wasn't complicated in the slightest. But this one I think is probably my favorite in the level by far as it's parking the correct vehicle in the right parking spots for the mini kit to spawn in but the reason it's my favorite isn't because of the puzzle. When you put the big police car together like three officers pop out in the back of it and I just want to ask how did those guys get in there and why were they in there and why did they only come out the moment I put the car back together? Too many questions to ask with no answers. But after that we go through the rest of the level collecting everything else that there was to collect to free Catwoman and finish the fourth level in the story which brings us to the fifth and final level in the Penguin story which is of course Penguin and Catwoman's level and I must say that throughout this video I tried my best not to mention it but this damn AI player man I'm not sure if it was set to screw up the main player but literally when I was trying to get the red brick by playing this mini game instead of hooking the fish to put into the respective colored bowls I just kept picking up poison ivy instead like even after I tried moving her off to the side she just kept getting in the way and it's not just in this instance this has happened numerous other times in this game where the AI is just a complete moron and doesn't do what you want to do when we've literally seen them be capable of doing it for example back in the hero version of Holly's mission we jump over this truck to get to the other side but of course the AI character doesn't move because of reasons and even though we've seen them change character in the past on their own to get to your location I don't know if this AI is just stupid or stupid but just pick one please. But let's get back to the level at hand. I wouldn't call this level really hard but there are certain sections that do test your patience. Also known as these sliding sections where you have to slide through the yellow indicators to spawn in the mini kits. The problem I have with these is that sometimes when you try to control your character to go through them they don't and they slide to the side of them meaning that you have to reset the level from the very beginning and keep coming back until you get it. Which happened to me quite a few times and second the first one that you have to do outside as sort of a tutorial is completely broken as my character literally wouldn't go through the second one which meant I had to rely on my computer friend to use the blue flagged ones while I go through the orange flag. And thank god it worked cause if it didn't I would have lost my mind. But other than those two roblox in the way the level as a whole wasn't that bad as after that the last few mini kits are pretty easy to find bringing us to the end of the second story in the villain missions as you don't even need to finish the level off as you can just save and exit and leave the level as fast as you can since at this point we only have 4 hours and a half left in the challenge so we better speed things up. Which brings us to the final story in the game which is the joker's return and the first level was pretty much as straightforward as you could get as all the mini kits and the red brick were pretty much laid out for the player to find without that much hassle except for the last one where you had to use the truck in order for the door to open up. But I really did enjoy the little parking mini game you get to play on Robin's control panel. I know we've seen this type of thing many times throughout the game but it's cool to get something different once in a while. The second level I'm just gonna skip entirely because it's just another vehicle level that yes technically did take me 30 minutes to do but that's because I just didn't shoot everything as I've been saying throughout this entire video in order to get everything you need to shoot everything and I clearly didn't do that. The third level on the other hand is the complete opposite. Although not the hardest we've seen so far in the challenge, you definitely need to be as thorough as possible if you want to get everything in this level and you can't leave one door unbombed or else you'll completely miss the red brick hidden behind it. But as a whole, this was probably one of my favorite levels to go through in general as it's very open and feels more of like a sandbox type level as you're able to move around very freely without the game forcing you to go into certain places. But as for the collectibles, as I said before, you really just have to do your due diligence and go through literally everything in this level to find them. But I will say that I almost didn't miss the last one as in the end, I realized that I could joker buzzer the last buzzer twice which of course gave me the last mini kit to add to my collections level. Again this game can be very sneaky when it comes to these collectibles so I'm always on alert for these types of things. But now we move on to the fourth level in the story which of course is killer mods level and just like the third level it's very sandboxy and I really enjoyed it as well as finding everything as it makes you search through everything and explore the level in its entirety which I'm really liking about this final few levels. Of course the kits aren't that challenging to get through as all you need to do is search around for them but in general my favorite kit I'd say in this level is again another one where you get to drive around in a boat and just do three laps in order to get the mini kit. But other than that the level wasn't that big of a challenge, not straightforward like all the others but did make me search around for everything if I wanted it. A lot like the vehicle levels 
honestly, but a lot harder and more enjoyable because we get to control a goddamn Joker Titan. What other level in the game actually lets you do that? But next up is the final level in the villain mission room. And if you made this far in the video, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I enjoyed making this video. And I really appreciate the support. But now let's get into the final level in the story, which didn't initially cause me too many issues off the bat, but I haven't spoken too much about these hostages that I've been saving throughout this game. And yes, these hostages have been getting saved throughout this challenge. But this one in particular, I just couldn't find since I didn't remember me getting the hostage in my initial playthrough of this level when getting super status. And after searching up and down this level, I decided to turn to YouTube. Yes, I used a guide. And when I used this guide, I found the area of where the hostage was and lo and behold, they weren't there. So I went back into my footage and looked to see if I somehow saved the hostage. And my only theory is that the AI Joker somehow shot the hostage, but that doesn't make sense at all. Since all the old hostages should appear in the game anyways, no matter if they got saved or not. So after scouring the internet, finding out how to see if I saved the hostage in a level or not, I found out that if you hover over the level in the menu, if you see a happy face next to the level, you save the hostage, which makes absolutely no sense because I clearly didn't save the hostage in the level or the AI Joker is just sentient and we're all doomed. But I'll just say that the game was bugged, okay? And after that, we get the final few mini kits and we complete both the hero and villain missions by collecting everything in them. But that's not all because when you do this, you unlock two extra bonus levels which consist of collecting a million studs in them and if you manage to miss one, you have to search throughout the entire level until you find it. And it took me about an hour to do both, which I'm not the most proud of, but it's already done so it's whatever. So after I completed the final two bonus levels, I head over to the back computer and start purchasing everything I could afford as in order to 100% the game, you need to literally unlock everything in the game. So I head over to the extras menu and me having about 3 million in the bank, I thought I could afford everything, which unfortunately wasn't the case as these things were really expensive. With the highest score multiplier costing me 5 million studs. And at this point, I only had about 2 hours left in the challenge left, so I had to find a way to get these studs quick. And again, a quick Google search later, it seemed like the Catwoman level gave the most studs in the fastest amount of time. I'm not too sure how true this is, I'm just trusting a random Quora answer online. But of course, I didn't do this raw because before this, I had accidentally bought a stud multiplier as well as a stud magnet, which both helped immensely because after turning both those on, I was getting crazy cash. And after about 40 minutes or so of grinding, I was able to afford the highest score multiplier at 10x and I quickly gained more and more cash, which allowed me to unlock the last sets of extras and data to unlock the final data, which cost 4 billion studs. How am I going to get that in one hour? It already took me about 40 minutes to get 5 million. How does the game expect me to get 4 billion? Well, as you know, when I unlocked all the extras, I unlocked all the score multipliers. So when I turned all those on, and even before I entered the level, I was already on 17 million by the time I got to the bat boat, which meant that this wasn't going to take me long. And about 20 minutes later, I got my 4 billion studs, which surprisingly was the max number you could carry. And after that, we go over to the back computer, go to the data menu, unlock the final piece of data, which says the end. 